What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. We have a lot on our plate today. Or should I say we have a lot of bar tools on the table today because we're gonna talk about my 10 favorite essential bar tools as a professional or a home bartender. And we're also gonna talk about my favorite not essential bar tools, but very fun and useful that I think you should get if you already have the 10 first. So if you guys are ready, let's do it. All right, so first thing on the list, the jigger. I think a good cocktail starts with precision. You need your cocktail to be balanced. Sometimes we're dealing with very small measurements. So a uh, precise jigger comes in really handy. So there's a couple of things that I look for when I buy a new jigger. And the most important thing for me is all the measurements in only one piece. So this bell jigger right here, for example, there's the one ounce or 30 mil on one side and the two ounces or 60 mil on the other side. But inside the cup, there's a little line here, which means it's an ounce and a half or 45 mils. And here you have four different lines. Quarter ounce, 7.5 mils, half an ounce, 15 mils, three quarters of an ounce, 22.5 mils. And when the cup is full, one full ounce. Those six measurements usually are the ones that we will use in pretty much all cocktails really really not often we're going to see for a third of an ounce or stuff like that so it does pretty much everything that you need in only one piece so when you shop for a jigger just make sure that there's also the quarter ounce usually like most of them do the half ounce but they don't go under half an ounce and i think the quarter ounce is really really useful to have in a jigger then the japanese jigger is also one that i like to work with why because as you can see when you look at the cups this one is narrower so when it is full at the surface if you just go one millimeter below you will lose much less liquid than if you go below this line because this surface is larger also means more liquid at the surface does it make sense i personally work at the bar always with the bell jigger Reason being, it is really stable. It is lower because it is larger. It is also much more stable on the bar top. And when I'm in a rush, sometimes I just move fast and it's easier to just hit the jigger. It falls in the ice bin or on the top of the bar and it makes a lot of noise. It's annoying for the clients. So I found that the bell jigger was just the perfect fit for me so that's it for the first item of the list now let's move on to the second item which is also very important maybe even more important than the jigger itself and i said the shaker all right so the shaker this is a very fun one there's a lot of different options there's one even that i don't have here because i never use it which is the uh, glass boston shaker what you will see me use more often on the channel is my glass shaker here it's a cobbler shaker so that means three pieces so the tin and the upper part which is like in two pieces and you have already the strainer here so you only have to take the cap out and strain your cocktail i like to use that at home but at the bar i never use it reason being this is glass really easy to break also when you make a sour it's not really recommended because you have to shake it dry shake it and then add ice and it's just like leaking everywhere really not useful um, a lot of people will complain as well that the cobbler shaker will stuck all the time it's really like you can't open it because like it is metal when you shake it it just like shrinks because metal will shrink when it's colder so it just like makes it very very tight and really hard to open uh, this little one here i kind of like it because it is really small so again at home i like to use my cobblers but at the bar i don't use it i think i could recommend this one like this one i love it for my videos because like you see the liquid going inside the cup i think it's beautiful if you're a collector i think you should get one you you could get one and you're gonna like it I, I like to use it for myself that's for sure but maybe that would not be the one i would recommend for the first shaker like of your life so let's now we talked about this one let's set it aside uh, let's talk about this one why i like it and why i would recommend a small metal cobbler shaker for the home bartender so the reason why i like this small cobbler shaker is because it is small I would recommend it for the home bartender because at home you can easily run out of ice and because it is smaller it uses less ice. So I think it is very useful but beside that 
the one that I would recommend like for everyone, professional home bartender, is the metal tin on tin shaker. This one locks really well. So when you make a sour, it is not a problem. It will not break, really easy to wash. It's very light. The metal tin on tin is probably the best option for both home and professional bartender. So that seals the deal for the shaker. Now let's talk about the mixing glass for the stirred cocktails. All right, so the mixing glass, another interesting topic. And there's a lot of things to consider when you want to buy a mixing glass. And one of the most important thing for me is the weight of the item. Often I will stir the cocktail with only one end and the other one will be like shaking or reaching for something else when I work at the bar. Um, so it is very important for me that the mixing glass is heavy enough so it can hold still. A lot of mixing glass will be smaller, very lightweight with like very thin paper tin glass or crystal and just doesn't work for me because it just like goes all around the place when you stir, when you can't hold it, obviously, if you can hold it, if you only make cocktails at home and you always just do one at a time, it's not much of an issue, but if you are working at a bar and you do more than one thing at a time, this comes really handy when it's heavy and it's steady. It looks better because it just, it just doesn't move all around the place and less chances you will just break it or make it fall and make a mess. So this is one of the things that I really look when I buy a mixing glass. This one has a very thick and heavy glass bottom. So I really like it. Then you have the quality of the, uh, the item itself. You're gonna see a lot of mixing glass that has like design in the crystal. When you wanna buy a mixing glass that has design in the glass, it needs to be engraved because if it is a mold that makes this design, what will happen is there will be some bumps inside of the mixing glass. So when you want to stir, just a spoon is going to block between the pieces of ice and the bumps inside of the mixing glass. And it's just going to make like a loud sound, ding, 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 really annoying. And just the movement, the revolution of your spoon will be very like choppy when the inside of the mixing glass is very slick and perfectly round. It will just like go so smoothly. And this is also something that I really look for when I buy a mixing glass. But if you go to the store, uh, you can just like pass your finger inside of the mixing glass. And if you feel some bumps of the design of the outside, just like stay away from that one. Just go for one that is very smooth and perfectly round. All right, so that's it for the mixing glass. Now let's talk about the bar spoons. Many bar spoons. All right, so the bar spoons. What should you be considering when you want to buy one? First thing, I would say the length. You have to choose your favorite length. These two right here, for example, are very long. And for me, this is not convenient. Why? Very simple, because you're more likely to make a mess with longer bar spoons. For example, if you have your mixing glass, and you place the bar spoon in it, it sticks out by a lot. So if you are at the bar, you have a client sitting in front of you, you wanna go and reach for his empty glass or anything on the other side of the mixing glass, chances are it's gonna be in the way so you can make like a mess very easily. While if you use a more regular size bar spoon, like this one, which is kind of medium, I don't know how many centimeters it is, this is my favorite length. I'm gonna write it on the screen. When you place it on your mixing glass, you have enough space to stir and it's not sticking out by that much. So it's easier to reach for something on the other side. Then you also have the very small ones that I don't find so convenient because they are really uh, short. So they're not sticking out enough to stir properly in a regular size mixing glass. Then also you have the different tips because most of the bar spoons will have obviously a spoon on one side and on the other side you have this that I think we call a teardrop. Sometimes you have a trident or a fork. A lot of people will say that this is meant to go and reach for the cherries or the olives in a jar. I never used it for that. I never used it actually for anything. I think it is completely useless. So guys at home, if you found a usage for your fork at the other side of your bar spoon, let me know in the comments down below what you use it for. I'm curious. 
but for me it is useless so i most of the time will go for a teardrop so this is my perfect bar spoon here there's also sometimes uh, some kind of a muddler at the end of a bar spoon also never gonna use that i'm gonna use a real muddler and we're gonna talk about real muddler later in this video one more thing to consider when you want to buy a bar spoon the size of the swirl of the bar spoon you probably can't see it like that good here but these two are very different this one is very thin or refined while this one is looser it's rougher so when you use it a lot on your finger the sensation and the comfort is much better on this one which is a tighter swirl so usually the cheaper ones have that rough finish while the more expensive one have a very tight and more comfortable finish i would say take that under consideration when you want to buy something that you will use for a longer period of time also some bar spoons are just like long rods with no swirl they also work quite well but they don't look as good so my favorite as i said bar spoon is this format here teardrop medium size with a tight swirl like this so that's it for the bar spoon so now the next item on the list is the strainer so the julep strainer this was not always used as a bar tool first initially it was created to help you to drink your cocktails and prevent you to have a lot of ice into your mouth so the julep cocktail was a cocktail served with crushed ice so we called it the julep strainer because it was invented to drink this cocktail so we were putting this on top of the cocktail and the ice was staying into the glass while you were able to drink your cocktail. But eventually straws were invented, so we got rid of this to drink the cocktail, and it got stuck behind the bar, and bartenders started to use it as a strainer for mixing glass and shakers. It doesn't have like the perfect shape to use as a strainer sometimes, like this one is quite small, so the ice might tend to just like pass next to it. This one sometimes is too big for some mixing glass, so it is not perfect. But if you want to roll a cocktail, which is the action of passing the liquid from one tin to another to chill and dilute the drink, the julep strainer is what I use the most it for. I think it works really well. It works better than the hot orange strainer. So if you guys are rolling your drink, get yourself a good julep strainer. Then you're going to have the Hawthorne strainer. This is what you will see the most behind the bar. And there's usually two different sizes or shapes. This one is actually meant and designed to fit in your mixing glass or into your shaker like this. And you just hold it like that and then you strain your cocktail. If you don't like that, you have the option of having one like this that will sit on top of your shaker or mixing glass like this because of the little uh, arms or leg or teeth here it will just hold perfectly on top and then you can strain your drink those are actually easier to use so if you are a home bartender i recommend you go for this kind of outdoor strainer what to consider when you want to buy one if you can get like a coil that is very tight this will help you to strain or fine strain your liquid more easily so if you have small ice shards they will have a hard time to pass or go through a very tight core like this you will see some that are really cheap that are really like loose like this this is not good you want a very tight core something that i've learned like a few years ago that i didn't know when i first started bartending when you use an auto strainer like this you can close it so when you close it down like this when you just push you really got to make for an even tighter strain. So in that case, most of the time won't need like a fine mesh strainer when you really want to get rid of all the impurities in your cocktail. It really does a great job. That's pretty much it for the strainer. I talked about a fine mesh strainer when I was talking about this. Uh, that's because sometimes you really want to filter your cocktail to the fullest and that's when a fine mesh strainer comes in very handy so we're going to talk about that well right now fine mesh strainer what to consider when you want to get one for yourself the first thing would be to get a mesh that is very tight because otherwise it will let 
pretty much anything go through like the little pieces of uh, herbs will easily go through a fine mesh that is not super fine so get one that is very very tight and you will get the best result because that's the point of a fine mesh strainer is to get rid of everything except for the liquid so if you use one better use one that is doing this so use a fine fine or very fine mesh strainer second thing the difference between these two you see this one is very deep this one not so uh, when you fine strain something that has a lot of solids like uh, maybe like a strawberry daiquiri for example these strawberries will muddle will crush and they will make some kind of a paste so when you want to strain that it will kind of sit at the bottom of the strainer and it will block the liquid from going through so if you have just like a small one like this that it's not deep enough uh, it will just be like a pain to uh, strain your cocktail. So when you have a bigger one, it's more forgiving. So you can just pour a little more before you have to go with your bar spoon and try to ease uh, the liquid uh, to go through it. So that would be it. Two things to consider. Very fine mesh strainer, a very fine, fine mesh strainer, <laughs> and one that has enough space to hold a little more liquid. Don't go overkill. This is a little too big. Way too big. It's a hat. It's hat big. So it, it doesn't work. So when I say go big, I mean cocktail size big. Too small, perfect. So now we're done talking about the fine mesh strainer. There was not a lot to say about that. What's next on the list? Oh, the juicer. Let's talk about some juicers. Okay, so I always have two juicers at home. One for the limes, one for the lemon, because limes and lemons don't have the same size. So if you try to juice a lemon in a lime juicer, it won't work. And if you want to juice a lime into a lemon juicer, you will lose a lot of juice because they're too big. So I recommend you go for one for each, then for the grapefruit and the oranges. I prefer to juice it like uh, with, uh, you know, with the uh, kind of juicer, but I don't juice grapefruit and orange that much often. So it's not part of my essential list. Lime and lemon, though, this is something that we use very often. So that's why I'm talking about these. So that's it for the juicers. Now, one more thing I think you really need in your arsenal, a knife. All right, so the knives now. This is dangerous. Not because it's sharp, because if you go down that rabbit hole, you can start to collect knives and it's gonna cost you a fortune. <laughs> so you've been warned. But the one that I use most of the time on my videos is this Japanese knife here. I really, really love it. It is just big enough so I can slice citruses but it's also uh, sharp ended so I can just like make my zest uh, and make some very uh, fine cuts to make some pretty zest with it so I think this is very nice it is my favorite size but if you want to just like buy a regular knife Victorinox is a very cool brand it's super sharp it's cheap and it works really well uh, but you have also some beautiful all stainless steel knives like this one so this is also very good to have in your arsenal but my favorite is this Japanese knife here it just looks awesome that's it you need a knife because we're gonna cut a lot of citruses and you're gonna make a lot of beautiful zest in your career so get yourself one that you like to use because you're gonna use it a lot and you're also gonna need a cutting board because you're gonna cut a lot and you don't wanna, you don't wanna ruin your countertop or you don't wanna cut on your marble because you're gonna ruin your blade i've done that before just for the sake of the aesthetic of the video kind of upset a lot of people so get yourself a wood board like this this is cheap you can also get a beautiful butcher block board it's gonna look awesome in your kitchen and your knife is gonna thank you later it's gonna stay sharp it's important all right so next you're gonna need a muddler and there's not a lot to say about those but still there's a few things to consider for example in this one right here there's a lot of teats so it really helps to shred the fruits but at the same time a lot will get stuck 
in the tea here. So you kind of lose a little bit of the ingredients and I don't really like that. Also, it is actually a little small. So you have to reach and look for the ingredients to model at the bottom of your shaker. But this is not my favorite one. This one in contrary. But this one on the other end, I really like it. It is large, so when you reach the bottom of your shaker, it covers like half of it. So you don't have to search for your ingredients to model. And because it is a flat surface, it really just got to model and push on the ingredients and nothing will stick to the surface of the modeler. So I always preferred a large wood muddler that has a flat surface here. That's my favorite. So now last item on the list for the 10 essential bar tools, a peeler. So the peeler, it is not a very pleasing looking item. The one that are actually working well, that I found that really worked well, are always the ugliest one. <laughs> This one, I had it for almost 10 years, which is like very impressive for a peeler because at the bar where I work, we go through many, many different ones every year. A few things to consider when you want to buy a peeler, this, the blade needs to be like thick enough because otherwise it will break very easily. Second thing, it needs to be wide enough because if you want to make beautiful, large zest, you need to press on your citrus. You need a larger blade to be able to do so, uh, to, to get that large zest. So it, there's some that are really, really narrow, some that are very large. This is, I think, the sweet spot. It is how, how large it is. So the opening here is four centimeters. So in my experience, this one with an opening of four centimeters always been really good to me and it lasted me like for years. That's what I would consider when buying a peeler. A tough blade with a wide opening, but not too wide because otherwise chances are you will break it pretty fast. So that's it, all these 10 items, I guarantee if you have them, you will be able to make 99% of the cocktails out there. But there is more. If you wanna take it to another level, there are some very cool things out there. And I'm gonna talk about my favorite, some that I use on a regular basis, so they were not like a waste of money. Uh, they look cool, they are fun to use, I love them. So let's start first with, you know it, I used it several times on the channel, the Smoke Top. All right, so I really wanted to include the smoke top into this list because I believe it is an amazing tool. I love to smoke cocktails, and if you do too, I think you should really consider getting one for yourself. Because in comparison to a smoke gun, for example, that is commonly used to smoke cocktails, this one is much easier to use and much more reliable. There's no batteries, so it will always work. There's no motor, so it won't stop working. There's no hose in plastic that can eventually get blocked or also smell and taste like an old ashtray. This is all natural, all wood, so if you burn a little bit in the making of the smoke cocktail, it will just taste even better. So I really like it. I think this is a must for a home bar or even professional bar to use a smoke top to smoke your cocktails. So that's the first item of the not essential bar tools, but really fun to use. And in second, there's the ice pick. This is my favorite one of all time. If you are a nice geek like I am, if you like your clear ice, you like to make it at home, you need to get yourself a nice pick. And this is the only one I think you will ever need. As my peeler here, this thing I had it for several years. You can see the patina, there's a, a lot of vécu. It went through a lot. So if you wanna make clear ice at home, you need to get yourself an ice pick like this one, as I said, plus it looks badass. All right, so next on the list, bitter bottles. Bitter bottles, they're not only beautiful, they also make for a more accurate dash when you use them in comparison to the bottles that the bitter usually comes in. And my ultimate, my very ultimate favorite is this one right here. 
because the upper part you can screw it like this so it's really really solid it's never gonna go out there's a little seal inside so it's not gonna leak either and it's really precise so this is my favorite one smoked up ice pick bitter bottles now the ice mold if you want to make clear ice at home get yourself a good quality ice mold and the one that i use like all the time here is this one but if you watch my ice video before you probably know this one is not available anymore i asked some friends who owned different ones that are very similar which one were their favorite if it works well and i found two that are available on amazon that will do these two by two ice cubes like this it is not too expensive and it works really well so i'm also going to link them in the comments down below because unfortunately this brand is no longer available online don't get things like that like anything that doesn't use the directional freezing method will make crappy ice so just don't bother buying these kinds of molds just buy the one that you use directional freezing method last item of my list of the non-essential bar tools is an atomizer i just broke mine so i can't show it to you but if you want to make some spray of absinthe or to aromatize your cocktails the atomizer is a very useful thing to have in your bar whether it is a home bar or a professional bar it looks fun it's really useful and it will take your cocktail to another level so now all you need is some recipes to try with all your new bar tools and i got you covered for that there's plenty on the channel so go ahead have fun try them and let me know how you found them in the comments down below so thank you very much for watching have a great day and see you next week cheers